Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Misfit One Lifestyles with your girl, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Misfit One. Listen, before we get to our amazing guest, we're going to play the game. You know the game, the buzzword game. Um, In order to play, you got to make sure you follow on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, Elizabeth Colon, health strategist. And you got to tell us how many times we say the buzzword. Listen, are you ready? The buzzword is destiny. Ah. Okay, so keep that in mind. The first five people get a prize. You know your girl going to hook you up. Okay, again, buzzword is destiny. Let's go. I guess today knows all about that word. He is an author. He's a poet. He is a man that does it all. This is Jay White. Hey, Jay, how you doing? I am exceptional. Thank you so much for having me on your shows. Um, I'm excited to learn from you. I'm excited to engage with the audience and I'm here for it. Let's do this. Listen, I'm excited to speak with you, my brother. You and I have so much in common. And I think the one I really, really just said, this is why I have to talk to you, believe in travel. Yes. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about your uh, travel destinations and what does travel. Wait, before we get started, let me back up a little bit because you know, not everybody know Jay White like I know Jay White. Mm. So first of all, introduce yourself, Jay. I'm Tell Jay White. Who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jay White. I am uh, quite simply a, a guy that was chosen many, many moons ago to do some extraordinary things in the earth. And once I got the download that that the divine really got my back. Like I haven't looked back. So I'm, I'm a tremendous, like if, if one word could describe me, it would be definitely faith. Cause I, I have a, a faith and a fearlessness that has blazed trails, open doors, um, goodness landed me all over the world. So right. my faith, right. So I have a tremendous faith a tremendous measure of faith and it's just been um the journey has been amazing so right and you you are a, you're a tap dancer you are I author you I, I mean like you have you have so many talents that is just phenomenal right uh, and i love it you your first book was named what tap into your destiny did you did you say destiny? Tap into your destiny. Tap into your destiny. <laughs> yes, and what's so great about that is, um, it really means destiny to yours, not mine, not your neighbors, not somebody else's. It's definitely yours. Talk to me a little bit on how you came up with that concept how did you write that book um for me it was again following the journey the journey for me has always been uh and i I don't want to use the term always but since i was 12 i can go back and pinpoint how i had a destiny um not a destination but a destiny that i needed to follow um which was different than my, my my siblings my peers what my parents thought I would become, 
my destiny was something completely different. So I wrote about my journey. When I got the download that this is going to be your, this is where you're going. I don't know where everybody else is going, but you, you're going over here. Um, I just began to document that. And the more I followed that, the more doors opened, the more uh, trails were blazed, the more through the weeds. I, you know, I, I coined this phrase of going through the weeds, which means it's uncharted. And I'm charged for that. Like, that's where my faith is. And the, the, the road that's smooth, that's not my road. My road is automatically through the weeds. And I, <laughs> I'm looking forward. I ain't running from it. I'm running toward it. <laughs> that is really good. That's a good uh, analogy because it's true. You know, uh, some people have it. They think it's easy streets, you know, and they don't want um, any path of, uh, you know, we take the path of least resistance, uh, you know, as human beings. Generally, mm -hmm. we say, oh, it's comfortable and it's safe. But to say you you running, you going <laughs> through the woods, the weeds. I love that. Going through the weeds, because that shows to everybody who's listening that you're not scared to get your hands dirty. You're not scared to go in unchartered um, places and make your own path, which is needed in this time and this day. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you you tap danced in. On, on many stages uh, around the world and Ghana, Thailand, China, Dubai. So, you know, can you can you just give us a little bit um, on when you travel to these places? What is it? What is the experience for you? Oh, gosh, for me, um, it's a it's a way for people to meet God for real and to see God in a different space than what they're probably accustomed to, um, to go to places that you don't treat. First of all, how black men are, are viewed in many spaces, not in all spaces, but in many spaces, how black men are viewed, especially black men who look like me, who uh, seem to be unkept, seem to be just as wild and, you know, um, um, you know, I'm not groomed. <laughs> I'm put together very well, but typically, just... and I'm taller than most people. I'm almost six five. So whenever I go into these spaces, in in many cases, what they've seen on the news or how black men have been depicted, I automatically uh, defy those odds, right? I'm automatically a whole different um, um, vantage point than what they're accustomed to. And I'm in the tangible. So that alone has been liberating for me and I believe for them, right? Because I get a chance to show another, um, uh, this is what y'all not seeing. This is what you're not experiencing. And speak. then when I'm on the stage and I get a chance to, to speak and perform and, you know, I got perfect subject verb agreement or <laughs> I can put words together that make people go home like, wait a minute can you back up because you're moving too fast kind of situation. Right. For me, it's just, it's amazing. And it's like that pretty much everywhere I go. Yeah. And, and I love that because I'm going to just say it, you know, listen, we talk real on here. We're going to say real talk at all times. This is where we can really, you know, um, be honest and authentic. Right. Mm -hmm. And basically you're saying that people stereotype black big black men as scary big black men they scary mm -hmm. they're yeah. they're thuggish they're they're um the bad guys in the movies they're the boogeyman um mm -hmm. and for you to show up and speak well um very articulate and you are able to um move with grace and favor that's very 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 good for them to see that mm -hmm. yo this is that's tv land that's that's not real land and for you to go to different countries i love where you say um travel is where you meet god that's just phenomenal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, mm -hmm. go ahead go ahead well again i i believe that that's why we're here on the earth like if if you haven't, you're, it's one thing to read a scripture or, or read the Husea or 
you know, the Quran or the Torah or the Sea Scrolls or like it's one thing to read it, but when you meet somebody who's living it, it is a whole different capacity. And and I'm not from where you're from. So you can even have people in your immediate circumference that's talking about living in faith, but they're there with you. So it's really not a tangible uh, example. But when I come across the water and you meet me, that's what I'm saying. You meet God. I'm just a representation of the divine, right? Now I'm getting ready to show you I'm from a strange land. You don't know me from Steve. I'm not afraid of you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to hold you. I'm going to smile at you. I'm going to intrigue you. I'm going to give you some information that's going to helpfully transform your life. And then I'm going to be like Christ. I'm gone. (laughs) (laughs) yeah and and that's true i i i I never thought of it that way because i am a big reader as a little kid i would read everything and um i used to really get in trouble for reading like i would hide and read because i would read all the time and my daddy would get out that book go out and y'all do so i i read things so that i can experience things right it was it was my way of experiencing the world that I don't have access to right like I I couldn't be in London I couldn't be in Rome I couldn't so I would read about these places and I would really be there but as sure as I'm black as soon as I got old enough I was hitting all them destinations that I have read about and you know it's so different um, when you walking in like history, walking in a place, you know, for instance, uh, one of the places that I, I'm sure a lot of people have been to, um, but the cathedral, you know, um, the Colosseum, when you walk mm-hmm. in, in that Colosseum, I promise you, I feel as though I'm going to fight, you know, the, the, David, the Dan, you know, I'm going to fight the yeah, giant. Right. I'm, I'm a right. gladiator. I right. feel pumped up. I feel the crowd. I feel those places. And so I love when you say that you get to experience God because it really is very much like that. Mm-hmm. And you you take it, you you take it a step further. You want to teach young people. Uh, about traveling and why is it important for young people or people in general? Can you break it down for us? Give us a few little things of it, why it's important to travel. Um, absolutely. That's where your exposure is. The more exposure you have, the more your mind expands. The more your mind expands, the more that energy becomes infectious and you can come back to your habitat and inspire somebody. Look, man, and then when you're not settling and when you know that there's, it's kind of like seeing the sun for the first time. If you've been in darkness your Mm. whole life and finally you go outside and you see the sun, even if you never see the sun for another hundred years, you know it exists. And you start on your way to pursuit of seeing that like, nah, I know it exists. It's here. There's a magic in the earth that you experience. And once you have that experience, you're not going to settle. You, your, your spirit won't let you settle for not getting back to that experience. Like there's no, I know there's more out here and it may not be more in my neighborhood, but it's more out here in the world. And some of us are charged to go get it and bring it back to the neighborhood. So yeah, you have to be, I believe that it, it is incumbent upon you to get as exposed as you can. And if you don't have the resources or the wherewithal to get on the airplane or on a Greyhound or on the Metro rail or um, nowadays in, in one of those things they call these drones. If you don't have that capacity, get on the internet and take yourself to another country. Get on the internet and Google um, what textiles in Thailand or how they um, manufacture mud cloth or how they're weaving kinti cloth in Ghana, you know what I mean? Like take your mind on a journey um, and you got the resources. If you got the World Wide Web, there's no resources. There, I mean, there's no nothing that's keeping you from having those experiences. Yo, I, I hope y'all heard that because this brother just gave y'all some information. 
Sean, that that, that was tips that it, it is worth that time you took to listen to this. If you do not have the resources to get the train, the airplane, uh, the bus, then you can get on the www and take yourself there. I did that basically before the www. That's called a book. You know, I went to the library. You know what I'm saying? To the berry. <laughs> I believe in the berry. Oh my God, the berry is everything. You know. <laughs> believe in the berry. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you know, and what what else is really great is, you know. Not only do you go to these places and you expose yourself to new um, experiences, you then perform there. How is it? How how is it performing in a foreign land? Amazing. So, my first experience, I think, was in Brazil, and was it Ghana? I think it was Brazil. So I had to have a translator. And I got a chance to uh, teach tap dance to some little children amongst a an audience filled with, filled with elders. Mm. It was it was phenomenal because again, I'm the tallest guy in the room. I'm certainly the darkest guy in the room, and they didn't want to let me go. You know, people were crowding around me. I really felt like Christ. Like, man, is this what this feels like? <laughs> but I understood that. I'm not leading with ego. Like I ain't here. I don't want your money. I don't want your women. I don't, you know what I mean? I'm here to deliver something to you. And the to be received the way I was received was just amazing. Same with Ghana, same with Italy. Like it's just same with London. Just been amazing, man. It's been a, it's been absolutely amazing. Wow. I can see that. I can see that. Cause I go there and you know, it's crazy. Everywhere we go, they, they do accept you differently because they do perceive you as one way um, stereotype on TV. And, you know, mm -hmm. listen, I'm a sister, sister. Like I got chocolate skin. I got my natural hair. I'm locked up, you know, so they kind of at first was like, I don't know. Right. And then they like, we love you, Josephine Baker. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. now I'm Josephine Baker. But before right. you was kind of side-eyeing me. But right. yeah, I think that's amazing. And I love how you said it earlier that it gives them an opportunity, not only the exposure for us going there, but it also mm -hmm. gives them an opportunity to see who we really are and experience us in real life. Not on mm -hmm. the news, not on TV, not mm -hmm. in a movie, but in real life. And that does affect people's lives. Mm -hmm. That's Indeed. very transforming. Indeed. It really is. Now, listen, we talked about your travel. We talked about you tap dancing all over the place. Let's talk about your book. You have your latest book out right now. Is it No More Bodies? No More Bodies. Yes. Let's talk about that. What is, what is that one about? So No More Bodies um, came as a challenge last year in 21 as, um, so I, I'm, I'm in the business of mentorship and I'm in the purpose of mentorship. Let me say that. And I have young men around me. Uh, my youngest was nine, oldest was maybe 24, 25. And so for the guys who are older, we got on the issues of relationships and dating and of course, sex and girls and or women and right. so we I set out a challenge first it was just me I said you know what I just want to go deeper first I'm gonna change my diet then I'm gonna change how I interact with people because I really I feel like I haven't really even scratched the surface of all that I'm here to bring in the earth so I said you know what I'm going to give up and this was probably September I'm giving up sex I'm giving up sugar and i'm giving up swearing i don't do a lot of swearing anyway the three s's I, no yeah, like saying so that no. round with destiny but <laughs> right so um and unbeknownst to me so i'm a barber as well that's my first love the very first thing i did at the age of 12 was being a barber which i spoke to earlier about my life and my trek being a little bit different which was grooming me literally to learn how to listen, which was grooming me to be responsible and handle money, which was grooming me to be responsible with being compassionate and having um, 
an ear and a heart for people, right? So barbering took me all over the world but it was also preparing me. I'm bringing that in as a segue to No More Bodies because I've been very disciplined in my life, um, which is how I've been able to accomplish a lot of things that I've accomplished. And I'm not my accomplishments, but my accomplishments helps people to understand more of who they're dealing with. So challenging myself and then having these conversations with these young men as I was giving them haircuts made them say, I want to join this challenge. I want to get in on this No More Bodies challenge myself. And before I knew it, it started to grow like wildfire. And um, before I knew it, I mean, we had women on the trek. We had people in South Africa uh, on the trek. And I was like, man, I'm doing this. When, like, okay, it's at least 40 days and this is what you, you give up. And we have a stop and people... It just, it's just been absolutely amazing. So No More Bodies is about how we uh, utilize our gifting. Ultimately, it is, ultimately, it's about, are you there? Okay, mm-hmm. there you go. Ultimately, it's about really what are we building yeah. culturally? That's the, the takeaway is what are we building as a people? Are we having quick fixes? Are we living in the moment or are we building something substantial? I'm not in the, the book is not in the business of telling you who to be with, who not to be with, who to marry, not to marry, who to date, not to date, who to have sex with, who not to have sex with. More so than it is a book about being intentional about what are we building? What are you building with that significant other? Like, what are you building for real? And then throughout the book, I talk about some of the exchanges that we have like one chapter is like don't smash the plug actually that's three chapters i I got three different chapters about don't smash the plug and so they're like what do you mean don't smash the plug yeah what talk yeah so don't smash the plug is if you think in in real time a plug is something that gives power It, it provides power but power is is insignificant if you don't have an appliance with something to plug into the power right you got an appliance that's separate you have a plug that's separate but together they make something right you don't want to smash the very thing that's going to give you power you don't want to be that instrument of you don't want to go and have sex with a person that's going to unlock your whole entire future if this isn't the person you're supposed to be with right this person isn't the one but this person is going to introduce you to the one Or this person isn't going to write the check, but they're going to write, they're going to refer you to a company that's going to get you more money than you ever had in your lifetime. But once you have sex with them, you've just, especially if you're not supposed to, if, if the, if the exchange or the meeting wasn't supposed to be that, then you have just smashed the opportunity. Yeah. You've killed the opportunity that was, that it was, it was opposed to birth. It was supposed to, to garner you something, but you smash the plug. <laughs> and now you and the plug mad at each other. So y'all just cut off each other's resources, which ain't really your resources. You're just a steward over those resources. Like we're all just stewards over, over our relationship. Absolutely. So now, because I'm mad at you, I'm not going to introduce you to him or her and right. vice versa. Right. You just smashed the plug. Yeah, don't sleep with the plug, man. Don't sleep with the plug. <laughs> Do not sleep with the plug, brother. Man, this is awesome, Jay. Tell me, how can people connect with you? How how can they reach out? Man, Jay the Dreamer, uh, J A Y the Dreamer dot com, or um, my Instagram is Jay the Dreamer seventy three. I'm a seventy three baby. I'll be fifty this year. Well, in January, which I'm I'm just absolutely phenomenal. I, I feel just floored by that wow i I just turned 50 i just turned 50 in june the fifth really yeah you look absolutely amazing thank you beautiful oh thank you you i mean listen i think something about them 70 babies because you don't look 50 no way no No, yeah i feel like i'm 18 and i get that every day you know when i tell the young that i'm around they're like bro bring your for real bring your id out yes i'm like no you know, the most high will preserve you when you do, you know, when you about that work. When you're in line with doing what the most high call you to do, it's a preservation in that. You know what I mean? 
Absolutely. I, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe that. I believe it because, you know, it's it's crazy because my, my child is 32. I have a 32-year-old, a 26-year-old, and a grandbaby, and my youngest would be 23. Like, like I'm a full old woman. Like, I'm a grandma, and people would be like, no. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure you get it. And I think that's right, because we are living in our destiny. Yes, we are living in our destiny. Yes. And and so before I wrap this up, though, I want you to really talk to everybody who's listening and give them maybe three tips or, or on how they can move like in their purpose and live in their destiny? How can they start those things? Well, if you haven't, um, that's one of the things I do as a coach. I help people to find that. Um, at the end of the day, being able to get still enough, get quiet enough so that you can do that mm. um, is, is, first of all, there's nothing else outside of that. There's nothing. Like, there's no Anything outside of that is existing. And I'm talking yeah. about, there's a difference between existing and living. Right. right? And I think we want to live. You want to live your life. You don't want to be, um, go through life with regret. So I would say, number one, get still, get quiet, get into what the most High has called you to do. Number one. Number two, pray for everything that is hindering you from doing that to be removed. Wow. Which yeah. takes the level of maturity to ask for the most high to move those barriers out of the way. And then third, I would say, um, welcome what's to come. Welcome it. Welcome what's to come. And when it comes, don't be surprised. Again, run toward it. Not away from it. Run toward it. Even if it's in the weeds. Even if it's in, especially <laughs> in the weeds. Especially if it's in the weeds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Mary J, you are really giving us like life right now because it's so important to travel. It's so important to live in your purpose. It's so important to just be who God created you to be, right? And and I thank you for being that representation of this black man who out there doing the thing you know and and that smile you know it's good to see you know that we could be um a culture of happiness and joy and mm -hmm. peace you know instead of always drama uh dysfunctional and disillusion you know what i mean and mm -hmm. so i i applaud you for going out there, speaking to people, changing their lives, transforming them, and doing what you do, brother. I really, really am so happy you had time to talk to us today. I'm so grateful to be on your show. Thank you so, so much for y'all patience and y'all working with me. I'm grateful. Anytime, because you know what? Ain't, ain't nobody stopping us. What's meant to be no. is going to be. You can't have, ain't nobody can stop us, right? It is, the, it is the truth. We have destiny. We have purpose. We have, that's it. E, e, e. Now, listen, before I let you go, you know you own Misfit One. Yes, ma'am. And you know, I say fit. My fit is focus, intentional, and transforming. Mm -hmm. And you are living that every day. And, and thank you. I really appreciate right. that. But You're how welcome. do Jay take care of himself? How do Jay take care of jay what's your you know, self-care look like you know truthfully like my self-care happens every day i'm in my in my car on my truck and i'm silent like i love being in silence uh i'll ride down the street i you, when i tell you the perfect day for me is about 75 degrees and i can just ride with the windows down i don't care if gas is ten thousand a gallon i'm gonna <laughs> always be all right but I like to just get on the expressway and just ride with the windows down and just listen to nothing and let the air blow on my face. That's what I do. That's awesome. Now, I've heard a lot of things, 
but that's the first time I heard it. And it makes sense because I'm a country girl, right? So I like, I'm the one with my feet on the dashboard when my husband's like, you are a country, you know? Uh, but I get it to be riding in the car with the windows down and people think that self-care has to be something that you have to go and do or expensive or this and that, mm -hmm. but a simple ride in the car, awesome. Every day. Every day, I get in the car and I just <laughs> I ride. I just, I love it. I don't own a television, never have in my life. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm detached from what's happening in the media. And, um, you know, it's just a lot of things that I just don't do. You know, I don't party. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with these things by any stretch of the imagination. That's why you look the way you look. Yeah, man. Life is good. Me too. Life is yeah. good. I try yeah. to eat the and. Uh, tap is my exercise, which is another way for me to decompress. But yeah, man, I love my self care is making sure that I'm I'm speaking to the hearts of people, that I'm pouring into people. Like that's my self my self care. Like if I don't do those things, like it's not all right. That's what I do to take care of me. I take care of other people. It's the weirdest thing, but it's the what so. Wow, I love it. I love it. I love it again. You guys, this has been phenomenal. I know that you have learned some things today and I want you to really live in your destiny. Um, mm -hmm. Until next week, you guys, live fit. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Miss Fit One Lifestyles. Listen, when you are fed up, and sick and tired of living this stifled, overwhelmed, and overstressed life. And you're ready to live the fullest, richest, and healthiest life by gaining more confidence, more energy, and more clarity. Living in your best self. You know what to do, right? Go ahead. Go to my website, MissFitOne.com. Sign up for our online courses, Creating Healthy Habit, so that you too can live fit, focus, move with intention, and transform your life.